Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Let's have some fun. Story inspired by stats. I was daydreaming as I stood in front of the urinal in the bathroom where I work. I couldn't stop thinking about what it was like to wear a full set of women's clothes under my business suit the day before. No one knew anything about it. If I was careful, the pants were long enough to cover my ankles. Even my secretary, who has a good eye for details, had no idea what was going on. A deep, authoritative voice from behind me asked, Do you really want to see how far you can go without them knowing? I'm pretty sure I almost jumped about three inches. There was no one in the bathroom when I went in, and I didn't hear anyone come in. My stream stopped suddenly, as if I had been caught in the middle of something embarrassing. I turned around to try to get my thoughts together while quickly tying my fly. I gasped. What did you say? The voice continued. You were talking about your charade from yesterday. I asked you if you really wanted to see how feminine you could get without your co-workers noticing. The stranger looked like he had just walked out of a scene from an Arabian genie movie, except that he was wearing a very stylish business suit. His carefully grown beard gave him a knowing smile. I started to think, how could he know what I was thinking? He stopped me in the middle of my question by saying, because it comes naturally to me to know what other people are thinking. He went on to say, I was born with this and other powers. I was able to give myself eternal life, the ability to fade in and out of the reality. You know, as your world at any place that interests me. The ability to change things, to fit my whim. And last but not least, the ability to tell a good joke. The only problem is that I get bored easily and am always on the lookout for something new that will make my day, year, millennium, or whatever more interesting. How girly could I get without my co-workers noticing? It kept going through my mind. It was something to think about. I really liked how women's clothes felt on my body, and I liked the little adventure of wearing women's underwear to work sometimes. I secretly wished I had a more female body. But there were things that women did that I would never do. Ugh, making love with another man. Getting involved with all the things that women do, like shopping just for the sake of shopping, following stupid trends, and making small talk with other women. Look, said the stranger, I have a bet that will make me laugh and give you what you want. The only rule is that once we're done, you can't remember me. Only the bet. Have to preserve my element of surprise. Can't have you blabbing around the coffee room that there is a genie loose on the premises. Here's the deal. Every time you pee, I'll make you more like a girl. Each time before you do it, you have a choice. If you can think of something that makes you more feminine, we'll play that theme. If not, I'll come up with something to make you more feminine. I'll leave you a little message in your mind so that you know what happened to you when you're done doing your thing. If you tell yourself, not tonight, dear, I have a headache. Before going to the bathroom, nothing will change. At the end of the month, you'll be left in the same state you were in when you started. You can choose between two big prizes. I'll give you $100,000 if you give me the body you see in the mirror. My eyes went straight to the mirror in the bathroom. There was a reflection of a face that looked strangely familiar. It was my face, but it had been slightly changed to look like one of the most beautiful women I had ever seen. It was so beautiful that it took me a while to notice the chest that caught my eye and the waist and hips that I would kill for. When I looked back at the face, I saw a small, knowing smile on the reflection. I was uh, tempted to give you a million dollars, but I wanted to give you just enough to start a new life without swaying your decision too much. Your second prize, if you want it, is the reflection in front of you. I looked in the mirror and saw my normal self. With just a few small changes, I looked as good as any movie star. There was no doubt that either choice would make my life much better. I know you'll want a new wardrobe and a set of wheels to go with that body. The prize in this case is a cool $50,000, but you can only get it if you don't become fully female by the end of the month. It looked like I was in a win-win situation. I could become 99.9% .9 female and still have the choice at the end of the month of being a chick or a stud. When do I have to decide? I asked, 
feeling overwhelmed by the number of options I had just been given. Don't worry, I'm sure someone will need to use the bathroom later this afternoon. You have until then to think, I accept your offer, stranger. In which case, the bet is on. Or, go away, stranger. In which case, this conversation never happened. Come to think of it, this conversation never happened anyway. I instinctively thought, I'll take your offer, stranger. As soon as that happened, my boss walked in. He looked at the urinal and said that it looked like someone had a hard time holding on to his member when the earthquake hit. Rank has its privileges, he says, as he walks up to the clean urinal, leaving me to carefully step over the puddle on the floor. I was able to finish my work without any more interruptions until I thought of the following message. Your waist is too big and your hips are too skinny. Let me take from the first and give you a fender. I suddenly realized that I had used the toilet without planning and that the first step in becoming a woman had happened by accident. I tried to figure out where the bet came from, but I had no idea. I did, however, know everything that led up to the final bet, which would take place in 10 days at the end of the month. When you have a moment, Sam, come see me in my office. I want your opinion on the Preston report that we're about to give to a client who doesn't know what's coming, my boss said as he wiped his hand on a ridiculously small paper towel he pulled out of the wall unit. I waited for the door to close and then jumped into the stall. All I could think about was how it would hide my new slim waist. I was afraid my pants would fall off in front of my boss because they were so loose around my waist. I closed the door and looked down. I thought my hips were a little wider, but I couldn't see my backside. I thought my waist was about six inches smaller than the usual 34 inches. When I got home that night, I was looking in the mirror before I heard the front door close. I went back to my office and hid all afternoon. Damn, my boss wanted to talk to me about the Preston report. All I could think about was the bet. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't figure out where it came from, but I couldn't forget the rules. I went to the bathroom and started to pee by accident. Too late again. Hair was taken from your chest, legs, and arms without any pain and added to your mane. I quickly went to the bathroom mirror and saw that my hair, which had been just long enough to cover my shirt collar before, was now about six inches longer and much thicker. Also, I hadn't seen my chest so hairless since I was 13. A quick look at my legs and arms showed that the hair there was not only very sparse, but also much finer, a very feminine amount of hair. First, I got a measuring tape and measured every part of my body. My waist was now 27 inches. My 34-inch chest was as flat as a pancake, so I decided that the next change would be to make a bust out of my thick calves. So, the first thing I did when I woke up the next morning was think about the changes. Each calf was cut to 14 inches, which gave me a bust of one and a half inches. My aortas were now very dark and almost two inches across. <sighs> this wasn't something to brag about at a beauty pageant, but it was a big deal for me. No verse flashed through my mind to tell me what had happened. Pity, I enjoyed the way the unknown was revealed to me. The next day was uneventful, but... My boss was very upset with me for not caring about the Preston client. I couldn't believe no one said anything about my hair, which I had pulled back into a ponytail as best I could. It was Friday the 23, and I decided I needed the weekend to come up with a plan. The end of the month was coming up in a week, and I needed to make sure I had the $50,000 I would need to look like a model by then. I had to say, not tonight, dear. I have a headache twice that day to make sure the changes didn't come as a surprise. That night, I wore my favorite female outfit to see how the changes made me feel. When I put on my black dress and looked in the mirror, I was so happy to see that I looked like a woman. I looked at everything and decided that I needed a bigger chest and to get rid of all the hair on my legs. Getting rid of the hair was easy. I took off my pantyhose, sat on the edge of the bathtub, lathered up my legs with soap, and carefully pulled out all the hair. The second wasn't as easy, but I just had to see how my dress looked. After my fifth change of mind, I said, I don't care anymore, and went to the bathroom while thinking that my waist could be smaller and my breasts could be bigger. When I looked down, everything got bigger. 
My waist was now 25 inches, and there was no question that the torso belonged to a woman. I would have a hard time getting this into my suit, but the dress looked great on me. Even though my face looked a little bit like a man's, and my hands and feet were a little too big, I felt confident that I could pass for a woman in public. These were bad ideas. If I did much more, I wouldn't be able to go to work on Monday. So I sat in front of the TV and enjoyed my changes to the fullest. The next morning, Saturday, I woke up to the phone, and it was my boss. He asked if I could come into the office for an hour or two to help him fix the Preston report. What should I say to him? I could only think that I had caught a cold, so I told him. He bought off that I was sick with some help from a tired voice routine. I added that if I didn't feel well by Monday, I would go to the doctor before I showed up for work. He believed me, but still wanted to see me. He would call me back with a plan. I was happy and relieved, so I hung up the phone and went to the bathroom. I should have known better, but I was still patting myself on the back for my great lie when I heard the beginning of a stream. Your bones are too big for a small woman's body. We will make your ribs, hands, and legs smaller. Now I was in double trouble. First, I saw hands and feet that were about two-thirds as big as they were a few minutes before. Second, I would be in for a second surprise if I didn't think of something to change quickly. My face needs to be a little more feminine, I thought as the muscles holding back the golden flow gave out. I went to the mirror reluctantly to see how bad it was. No longer bushy, my eyebrows were now thin and girly. When I smiled, my mouth was a little bit bigger, showing a beautiful set of even teeth, and my lips were much fuller, giving me a very girly pout. There were also some side effects. When I moved my slightly longer hair to find my ears, they were pierced. My request to look slightly more feminine gave me a cute look. It also looks like my beard had gone away completely. After about 10 minutes, I realized that no one at work could have missed the changes. I was devastated. What should I do? I looked down at my two size seven feet where my toenails were still painted bright red from the night before. The doorbell woke me up from my daze. When I looked out over the driveway, I saw my boss's car. I was in shock and didn't know what to do. I guess it was time to show and tell. He had just called, so I couldn't do my old I'm not home act. I yelled down the stairs that I was coming down soon. I didn't have to wait long to get the nail polish off my hands and the makeup off my face. I thought I looked manly enough to answer the door in my big terry cloth bathrobe and slippers that covered my feet. I opened the door to my boss, but I didn't know what to say. He rushed past me with an apology for getting me out of my deathbed, but he was desperate for my help. He just kept talking while he looked at me, not realizing how much my body had changed. After about an hour and a half and four cups of coffee each, we had the contract problems resolved, and he said that he was going to treat me to lunch. I looked at him kind of blankly. He finally said, Sam, I really don't care that you like to dress up as a woman. You are by far the best worker I have, and I will accept you however you want to look. I was shocked. Now get dressed, and let's get something to eat. I was stunned. He knew I had worn female underclothes. I managed to get out in my manly voice. How long have you known? Since that day last March when you came back from the bathroom with your slip hanging out of the back of your pants. Remember, I called a staff meeting and you were asked to answer the phones. Well, it turns out that about half of the staff already knew about this, but we all agreed that you were the kindest, gentlest person we knew. So we didn't want to embarrass you. So the whole company, all 15 of us, made a vow to not let on we knew anything. I sat on the edge of my bed in my room. I didn't know what to do. Then I realized I'd had four cups of coffee. As I walked to the bathroom, I laughed at how my plans had changed. In quick succession, I wished for two other things, but saved a few drops for another surprise. My long, cute hair hung down to my waist as I descended the stairs in my tight-fitting shorts, halter top, and sandals. Well, boss, do you think the other employees will be able to keep their vow? I said in my new sensual soprano voice. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.